I witnessed my mom get murdered at eight. Wow. Sorry to hear that. And so that was my excuse to all failures up into the fourth year of entrepreneurship. Whenever I didn't do anything right, doing it like it was me complaining. It's like, EJ, you could do this. But man, I, don't, I ain't have what you had, bro. Did you get yours yet? You know, the uniform for entrepreneurs all across the world, New ACOs. Go to newacos.com, make sure you get your uniform, make sure you get your gear and represent all around the world. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. All right, what's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens. We're here to run the play show where we give you the top plays when it comes to business, when it comes to leadership, how to build a community, how to build a brand from people that are doing it today. Uh, and I'm honored today, really. I've got some superstars that are in the building today. EJ and Mecca, they're in the building, and uh, you're going to get familiar with them. If you've never seen them before, I'm sure you've seen their videos. You know, I ain't got a lot of dance moves, but I'll be trying to keep up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But first of all, I just want to tell y'all, you know, I appreciate y'all coming through. Thank you. You know, taking yeah, time that. out. And, uh, you know, anytime you have busy entrepreneurs, I know it's, it's not easy to get an hour, you know, to step away, but I appreciate you guys serving the people. And, you know, I think more important than just talking on the, on the podcast is we get a chance to talk to people that were like us years ago. Right. You know, because I don't know about y'all, but I, I saw a lot of these videos coming up, and they'd be like, dang, okay, I got to be able to get there and do that. So, just let's start here, like, because it seems like to a lot of people, y'all just popped out in the last 12 months. Obviously, we all know that that's not the case. There's no, nobody. By the time we see somebody, there's been a lot of work and preparation that goes into it. So tell us, what did that look like? Like, when, when did you all really start your entrepreneurship journey? Well, I started my entrepreneurship journey in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, graduated from college. I spent five years at Benedict College. Shout out to... BC, BC, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? But um, I started out um, two-sport athlete, you know, didn't really take school serious. Mm -hmm. Only went to school because it was going to get paid for, honestly. Mm -hmm. If it didn't get paid for, probably been like bump school and, you know, instantly find a job. But I went through, took me five years um, to get up out of there, and I hit the ground running. NFL didn't work. You know, I washed my hands with that real fast. Yeah. I washed my hands with that real fast. So, um I went to LA Fitness. And I know a lot of people <laughs> that jump into fitness that's like the, they like breed trainers, yeah. for some breed instructors. Like that's everybody's first place to go is LA Fitness. Mm -hmm. And of course you're gonna hear a lot of bad things about LA Fitness and um, neither here nor there. Like you are who you are and you learn what you learn yeah. when you learn it. But I went into LA Fitness and I was like, look man, I gotta learn this. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to work all day. But if I have to work all day right now, yeah, to set up my future, I will. Wow. So the big. biggest thing was just learning the systems mm -hmm. that they had put in play, understanding that somebody put this together. Yeah. And it's not just one LA Fitness. It's mm -hmm. forty-seven almost yeah. in George. I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's the number. That was the number then. Yeah. But um, there's a lot of places. But anyways, um, from that point, after I felt like I learned the system, mm -hmm. I left. Now, yeah. here's the catch. I left and I wasn't ready to leave. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people that's watching this right now, you don't know when to leave, you don't know how to leave anything right now that you've been attached to that you know, takes care of bills, mm -hmm. takes care of your family, things of that nature. And I just jumped out on faith, you know, um, trusting that the information that I received from this company um, was gonna guide me the right way. So. Um, I started in 2014, and I'll pick up on a little bit of that. Little yeah, bit. there we go. I like it. I like, it. and I think you gave a a, a point in it that's important is, is that you said that you didn't want to work all day, but you were willing to work all day. And I think a lot of times when people get into entrepreneurship, they always start with all the stuff they don't want to do. It's like they want to win their way. Right. It's like I want to win, but I only want to work two hours a day. And I, it's like, no, nah, that's not. I always tell people you got to do what you got to do until you don't got to do it no more. Right. And and legally, obviously, right. But it's like. I've got to do whatever's necessary. Like you said, I'm going to start at LA Fitness. I'm going to work all day, and I'm going to learn what's necessary. And granted, you say maybe left too too uh, too early, but I think at the same time, you know, leaving helped get you here, right? Absolutely. And we always teach people that you can't connect the dots 
you know, really looking forward, you can only connect me going back. Absolutely. And you'd be like, you know, if I never did this, and I maybe would have never met this person or did this. So, man, congratulations. I'd love to hear that. So, 2014. 2014. All right, so this is 2022. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're talking about, what, six? No, eight years. Mm -hmm. All right, good deal. Y'all heard that, eight years. Okay. Megan, what about you? So, I've been in sports my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, ran track, did gymnastics. Um, but I ran track all through college. Uh, went to College of Charleston my freshman year. Went to Georgia Southern my sophomore year. Uh -huh. um, but I was one of those people that I just changed my major over and over mm -hmm. and over and over. I just really didn't know what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I remember it was the summer I left Georgia Southern. It was just summer vacation. I was supposed to go back to Georgia Southern run track. Mm -hmm. And came back to Atlanta. And I know you're not supposed to compare yourself to other people yeah. and stuff like that. But I was just seeing people that I graduated with and, you know, people my age that was walking around with stuff that I wanted, you know what I mean? And like, seeming like that they had it going on, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like I said, you don't compare yourself to other people, but it was more so motivation for me. It's like, yeah. I'm like I know I'm not about to be running track for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Like, what is it that I'm really about to be doing? So yeah. um, I decided to not go back mm -hmm. to Georgia Southern. I'm not running track. I know that's not what I'm about to be doing. I need to figure out what I'm about to be doing. So, um, like I said, didn't go back to Georgia Southern, stayed at Georgia State, didn't run track. But then it was just a big eye opener because when you've done sports your entire life and then you stop, it kind of puts you into a, a lost headspace of like, it's a big world out here and I don't mm -hmm. know what, you know, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know? Because you just like when you're doing sports in school and stuff, that's all you're focused on. You don't really see that there's a big wide world out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got into doing job after job after job. I worked at um, the Publix Deli, okay. making people sandwiches. Shout out to the Publix. They got the best sandwiches. <laughs> they do have the best sandwiches. Look, you ain't trying to Publix sub side. Let right now. They have the best sandwiches. Best sandwiches in the world. Right. Best sandwiches. So I was making sandwiches, slicing meat, slicing um, cheeses. Um, at one point, I was working three jobs. I was a hookah girl at a lounge in Atlanta. I was working at Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. I was working at Sunglass Hut. Wow. Um, but still broke as hell. <laughs> I'm working three jobs yeah. and it's like. Still don't got no money. Yeah, so I really got to a point where I've just felt at a very, very low, low, like, what is my purpose, mm -hmm. you know? And then um, I had to just go back to what it was that I just love to do. Like, what is something that brings me joy, brings me peace that I just like to do? And um, that was working out. There we go. You know, I mm -hmm. had stopped working out once I stopped running track, and it kind of lost myself. So. Um, and what year was that? What year was you like, all right? This was 2016. Okay. 20, so, 2016, 2017. Okay, so 2014 and probably. I, I graduated and high school um, 2014. Okay, shut up. Okay, yeah. I like that. I like so that. Okay. I graduated high school 2014. Um, 2014, 15, went to College of Charleston. Um, and then 15, 16, Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 16, 17, I was at Georgia State. Okay. And that's that's where you start making that transition, like, I want to get into entrepreneurship. Yes. Because okay. um, like, like I said, I'm walking around campus, and it's like students wearing designer stuff. Yeah. And it's like, how is how are they doing this? For real. <laughs> you know, like, when how? you look back, though, you, you see that. It doesn't like, work. Yeah. You know? okay, yeah, exactly. it. Okay. yeah, you get it. Yeah. Exactly. But, so, all right. So I got a question for y'all, uh -huh. right? Like, all right, you all put out a ton of content all day. Uh -huh. And it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, obviously you all do in the fitness space, and it's very unique. I love that. We'll talk about that well as well. But, like, what does your preparation look like for content? Because we have a lot of people that's trying to, like, they're like, man, I can't put out enough content to make one post a day. Or, like, what is your thought process when it comes to, all right, this is how we're going to put out content consistently? Do you plan it? Like, what's the, what is that? Well, for me, I feel like it's, shifted a lot mm -hmm. based off of like where I've been in my business and also just social media is constantly changing of like what they want from us yeah and you know at one point it was just giving people you know good quality workouts giving people you know what I felt like was you know quality content mm -hmm. but now it's I feel like it's not even really about that it's about trying to find the most trendiest sound and trying to find just a hot new thing that's happening right now, like mm -hmm. this week or this yeah. day, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? 
And um, I've actually kind of, it's been difficult for me because doing content that's just not, doesn't come natural to me and I'm just yeah. like searching for mm -hmm. something that's trending is hard because I've, I'm just used to making content that's authentic to me and that, yeah, yeah. you know, that, like I said, just comes to me. I've, I've always had a skill at, you know, uh, editing videos mm -hmm. and creating on that aspect of things. I, yeah. I used to be, at Georgia Southern, I was a video production major. See how it all come together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I was a video production, a production major, so creating videos and stuff like that is mm -hmm. easy to me. Yeah. But as far as just trying to stay on top of what everybody else thinks is just cool and creative is, yeah. is hard. Yeah. So, um, my process now in creating content is I really, I feel like over the years I've built my audience, I've built what people, my audience likes to see for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't really let it get to where it's like, I have to post three times a day. I have to, I have to post, like I haven't posted. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. even let myself get to that. That's good. I just let myself, once this content naturally comes to me, I, I get an idea that naturally comes to me, I'll post it out. And they they like it. There we go. You know, okay. yeah. but like I said before, it was like create, 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 mm -hmm. create, and you know that's stressful. Yeah, what you yeah. think? The process came from me when we met. Okay. It was like a it's a a one eighty. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm I'll go pass out flyers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of my day, my schedule at LA Fitness before I became an entrepreneur was I would be at work from nine to twelve, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a three hour break, and then come back from four to eight or four to nine. Yeah. And what happens was in the middle of that day, after the first half of the day, I would go pass out flyers. You see what I'm saying? I would yeah. go do that. When I met Mecca, she was 30,000. But what the hell is this? Like, who are you? <laughs> like, I'm trying to get to know you. Like, what yeah. you? But I was inspired by her. And what she did was, I talk about it all the time, was so unique. But she had this one day. She's, she'll tell you she didn't, she didn't do it for that long, but it was long enough for me to catch. Mm -hmm. And it was... Um, it was Happy Hump Day. Happy Hump Day was every Wednesday. I don't remember the time or anything, but she was doing a voiceover explaining the workout. Mm -hmm. like, this is brilliant. Like, and she gets a lot of traction, the most traction on that post. And it's like, damn, like, what do I need to do? What if and, I do? And mind you, what he's talking about, that was in 2018, hmm. you know? And it's like, now people are doing the voiceovers and right, now people yeah. are doing so that. And I'm game. just like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's... yeah what I was already doing and you know right. and so what came what came with that was creating a schedule okay that following year mm -hmm. I, I need to create a schedule she did one day I need to have something for every day I like that. let me find something that I can post on Mondays only let me mm -hmm. find something Tuesday let me find something Wednesday um and so I had to force myself to get into that space because I wasn't on when I'm posting on Instagram it's clothes yeah my outfits I'm fresh yeah. as here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you about to get this outfit mm -hmm. today. I've been yeah. saving this. Shit. Like yeah. that's what it was before we met. Mm -hmm. And um, she got me into that. EJ, you need to start posting videos. You need to start doing this. It's a lot more there. Mm -hmm. And um, I followed that system and and it and have anything to just do with fitness all the time. Yeah, it's just preparing for content to me is your audience knowing you. Mm -hmm. You do what you can to get your audience mm -hmm. to know who you are. Right and. Then you then you create content. It's a lot of people that are creating content that their audience just doesn't want to see. And then you start looking at views and you start looking at likes. Well, you do have a hundred thousand followers. You mm -hmm. do have two hundred thousand followers, but your audience does not want to see that. Yeah. It's clear as day. Mm -hmm. But if you go down your page and you see what did good, yeah. post a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Post a lot of that. I feel like mm -hmm. and I feel like that's because what I kinda hit on before, it's people aren't creating content being themselves anymore for real people are creating content that they think is just trending right now yeah. i feel mm -hmm. you know yeah everybody dancing dancing has nothing to do with yeah. your brand yeah like nowadays <laughs> no nowadays that's, that's tough because like you know you're trying to it's like the wild wild west because like there's no there's no like rules for it right but you're trying to you're trying to like navigate this world that nobody really gives you rules until after the fact. You know, right. so I, I always think that's why like business for school is like a little off because by the time you get out of school, all the stuff you learn has changed it's, anyway. Like yeah, you go to school exactly. for marketing. Marketing changed for us multiple times a year. Right. And so it's like, you gotta be able to adjust and, and, and go with times. But I think what both of you all said was either way, you still gotta stay true to yourself and your audience. Mm -hmm. right. And I think if you still, if you put out good content for them, 
you'll win long term because it's the, it's the people that make this stuff go. Obviously, the, the platforms try to do what they want to do. Like right now, it's reels. And they even said, I ain't gonna lie, it took me a little time to figure it out. I was like, how am I gonna do it? Because I'm not about to dance. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like I, may, I may drop one little video, I'm just like chilling for a second, but I'm not gonna be dancing. So I'm like, I'm literally looking at like, how can I make this fit my what brand you got going and on what I have going on? And I think that's something that everybody, if you're not posting or putting out content, you start. But then the other thing is like when you see what's happening, you say, okay, how can I take what's happening and make that my own and not, you know what I'm saying? Like I never did like the whole point and stuff. Like it's tight. And I know people do it, it and it works for unique. them. It's very unique. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I wish I like, had the patience. Well, I feel, like, I feel, I feel like, like it was dang. unique. I feel like okay. it was unique for the first couple people that did yeah, it. But yeah. now it's like. Yeah, I'm like, okay. You know? You know, whatever works. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so, all right. So y'all got in fitness. Mm-hmm. And fitness really, in, in like health and fitness, is a really a broad uh, industry. There's a lot of different ways you get into it. What made you all eventually decide to say, right, look, we're going to get these boards and we go going to start dancing on them while we're working out? What was that? So, so that's EJ. So as far as the boards, um, as far as the step boards, hey, look, we got to stay down step boards, sddfit.com, you know, you check that out, all that. Mm-hmm. But, um... The step boards came from, I worked at a gym called HX. Okay. And, and at LA Fitness, they had classes too. I was always wanting to be a class instructor because here I am in my head, like I can't be here all day. These people got, they're coming in, those instructors are coming in and they're there for an hour and they maybe go to the next gym or they're off for the rest of the day. But they had 100 people in the class. Mm-hmm. I'm struggling to train 100 people in a week. Right. And so these instructors are coming in. So I had already had that, but I got to um, gym that me and Mecca met at HX. Um, gym owner DP, mm-hmm. shout out DP. Um, he had a heat class. He had a step aerobics class, mm-hmm. a ro- both aerobics, mm-hmm. you know. And I I was never able to really do the heat class, but I was able to do a class that he had called levels. And so I got my footwork and all that together. I would go to his class. And just learning, like, man, I'm gonna do something like this eventually. And I end up starting my class that my class that I have now at that gym. Okay. Dope. And um, from there, I just wanted to just take it to another level. Like, I study instructors worldwide. I'm not trying to be the best in Atlanta. Mm. I want to be the best in the world. Yeah. So I'm looking at all type of aerobics instructors. I'm looking at I'm looking at Tavo. Mm-hmm. To death, he's, yeah, he's one, boxing. Who was that? Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm looking at him like, and and like he has an audience, and he has a YouTube, and he has views, and he yeah. has, he hasn't done this in years, and yeah. he still does it now, but just for fun, mm-hmm. you know, to, to my you know expertise on that. Yeah. But outside of that, I just wanted to create something that was fun, yeah, and ultimately what people do, mm-hmm. like adjust to what people do mm-hmm. and let's go out mm-hmm. you turn up you outside everybody outside now sure yeah for all of a sudden yeah. everybody's outside so it's like i i'm outside mm-hmm. i go out i have fun and i've mm-hmm. always went out and been in the club environment party guy mm-hmm. let me bring that to this board hmm. they get up for that yeah they get up unconsciously yeah. Yeah. for that they'll get up and do that but they won't get up and go run they won't get up and go jog they won't get up and go work out mm-hmm. you won't get up and eat right yeah so but you will get up to get outside yeah so let me do something that's going to keep you entertained and get you a good workout good vibes good energy the same energy mm-hmm. you're just in a workout outfit you're not in stilettos and mm-hmm. all of that you're that's in smart. you're in Nikes yeah. now yeah let's do this in Nikes mm-hmm you know, for an hour. Let yeah. me borrow you for an hour a week, mm-hmm. and and I can show you that I can help you get to the take your fitness to the next level. And since it's what I like to do and what people like to do, mm-hmm. it just it just came all together. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And that was also kind of um, my aha moment for me too. Um, going back to kind of one of the first questions we had as yeah. far as starting your entrepreneurship. Um, like he said, we both met at HX and. Um, There were classes there, but that was my first time. He worked at LA Fitness during that time, but that was my first time seeing anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole class vibe, bringing people together, a big group of people together, and like really making fitness fun, you know? And um, like I said, that was my aha moment, and that's what made me be like, light bulb, like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. This is something I can do. So that birthed on my glutes the best booty building brand <laughs> and class yeah. in the world. There we go, I like it. Cause, and, and so I'm, I'm taking a lot of things too, cause sometimes I feel like, you know, when you're starting an entrepreneurship, we feel like we gotta be 
so creative that we got to create something brand new. Like, like, like the world has never thought about it. And it's, sometimes it's like, yo, you don't even got to be the first at it. You could just find something and you could be better at it or market it better than anybody else or just have a different vision than the person that Yeah, that's doing what I'm going to say. I don't even think it's necessarily better. Mm -hmm. I think it's just taking what you take from them and making it your own, yeah. making it, you know, your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I mean, it's, it's like it's like everything though. It's like 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 even with content, it's like okay, it's a camera, but everybody doing something different in front with of the, the camera, camera, you know. And it's like, and I think that's sometimes people. I know I I would get like I I don't know if you about y'all, but I would used to, I used to Google online and just be like how to make money, and I'm just, just trying to find ways. I'm like okay, there's ways to make money, right? But like sometimes the ways sitting right in front of you, like y'all just going to the gym, yeah. You know, you just in there, but it's like you were also paying attention and looking, and it's like okay, you man, I think I could do that. Now, I do gotta ask this, like, how long it take y'all to put together a video with all them steps though? Cause I'll be like, yo, how y'all learn all people these moves? People think that, <laughs> it I mean. It doesn't take long. It doesn't, Cause y'all be together, y'all be synced up too. Well, yeah, well, e well, the process for that is, <laughs> EJ will, he he, he um, trains in the mornings. I'm at home with Makani, but he trains in the mornings um, and he'll come home, once he comes home, he knows the step, he comes back with the step routine. Yeah. He'll show me one time and he's like, all right, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but we do it. Can you know what I'm saying? Like now, now, no, now I definitely, I'm a stepper. You know, like yeah. you, you can show me a couple of times and I can catch on, but he's crazy. Like <laughs> I'll mess up one time and he's like, come on, we got to get it done. <laughs> got to get it done right now. And it's like, you feel me? That's you just it. And, and, and it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it. It's so crazy because <laughs> that just ties into the preparation for content. Yeah, like I'm exactly. already so how I come up with a step routine every week and I have to come up with a new song. I've been coming up with a different yeah. like every week every I'm gonna hear like, I'm gonna yeah. give you a banger. But how I come up with it, it goes back to me knowing my audience. Mm -hmm. I know the age range of the people that follow me. I know what they do. I know the mm -hmm. either it's gonna be an old song and I'm listening to music all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm never not doing something that will um not help me get better on that board, yeah. and me listening to music all day. I'm in the car. I'm riding. I'm, you know, what I'm saying. I'm mm -hmm. bopping in the car in my head. I'm trying to put this routine together. So I come up with a routine first. I may have the routine down by Tuesday or Wednesday. Wow. I may not pick the song until five minutes before I have to come home hmm. because it's so many options. I can go so many ways with this, but I only get one hour a week. Yeah. And so I need to make sure either it's going to be a very, very, very trending song mm -hmm. that everybody knows now or a very old song that everybody knows that's still super catchy. That's going to help you step better. You're going to know when the beat drops. You're going to know everything about it, and you're going to learn it. Yeah. Yeah. So that, to answer your question, um, how long does it take, we, and also the question about, um, you know, creating the content. So he comes home. We set up the tripod, set up our camera. He shows me the routine. We probably do it like three, four times max. Post it. And yeah, yeah post it. So, <laughs> see, I still be doing the first minutes, dance. Well, I believe I'm like, look, I can't even do all the moves right there. Nah. You can. No, nah, listen. You I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go to a class one day. You got like, to. Mm. You'll do a lot better than. What'd you, you say? How you do everything is how you do. Yeah, how you do anything is how you do everything. That's what Neil said. Yeah. I don't agree with that though, because you know, I mean, I do, but I don't. It's the same. Here's what I say. Here's what I say, because I can't swim, right? <laughs> and so. <laughs> How I do anything and how I do everything. Because if it's like if I, if that was the case, then I would suck at business. Because I suck at <laughs> swimming. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but I do agree with the philosophy of like if how you do the small things is how you do the big things. But I just that's one of the ones that I'm just like I see it, but I don't know if it's totally true. Because you know if that was the case, I was sucking lots. And, and that's, <laughs> that's, it's good that you say that because I'm on the board every day. Yeah, it's yeah. not a day that goes by that I'm not going to be on the <laughs> yeah, board. Yeah. It's not a day that goes by that you're not going to do what you do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs need to know. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's 1,000 percent normal to do what you do yeah, yeah. and stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And just I'm not I'm a step board instructor, y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, like and I'm fine with that, and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm good with that in my skin. You know, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability every week. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to post that board because that's what people want to see. Yeah. I'm not going to post a lot of stuff that people don't want to see. Yeah. They want to see the board. You want to see routine? Here. <laughs> here here it goes again. Yeah, there you, you go. You know, here it is again. Mm -hmm. And here it is again. And here it is again. And, you know, and it's it's made the best of it. Yeah. You know. How, how because I, so I have this philosophy, right, that. Because sometimes I've seen businesses, they, they don't work out for people, especially in relationships, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe, like, whatever it is, like, business or anything else, if you have a good relationship, business will make it better. If you have a bad relationship, business will make it worse, right? Because it's going to, you know, there's there's things that are uncovered in relationships when it's, like, pressure. Like, yo, 
You know, even like you said, like make this video. But like, if you really got some issues, you'd be like, yo, stop talking to me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it could really start breaking things down. How have you all been able to work together? Because now you got a family. There's a dynamic that's changed there. I'll ask you first, EJ. Do you feel like having a good woman has helped you in business? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Talk about it. Um, simply because she was already determined before I met her. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a strong suit. She already knew kind of that she wanted to be great, maybe didn't know what she wanted to do. Sure. But her having the grind and having the, the thought of not giving up and, you know, every single day I watched her go to Georgia. I met her in the Georgia State era when yeah. she was talking about, you know, changing schools. Mm -hmm. And she just wasn't giving up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't giving up. But what I can say is when we had our conversation, like, look, it's either going to be this or this. Mm -hmm. One of them has to happen. Yeah. Either we're going to lose school, we're going to rock with school. I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. Regardless, yeah. you know, if it's gonna be school, let's 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 work on graduating. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and get up out of there. But if it's gonna be entrepreneurship, let's let's do something. And it didn't. I feel like it didn't matter what way yeah. she went. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She was gonna be great regardless. So that helped me simply because now all I got to do is be a student to her. Hmm. You know, I learned a lot from Mecca. Like this yeah. social media changed my life. Yeah. We met off social media. I seen her. I slid her DMs a few times, <laughs> way before this happened. You know, so it's like, but seriously, it's just, that's... Did, did you see it when he slid the first time? Um, I saw it, but I mean, I didn't know him. Like, we hadn't met yet. So. Yeah, 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 that's how it is. That's how it is, you know. See, nothing to know, but you know she... Keep she, following um, up, keep following up. It'll be there. Well, you know, she definitely, like, was is that missing piece that I've, that I've always needed when it comes to growth. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that, that listens and, and executes. Mm -hmm. She executes, yeah. like... Execute this. Execute this now. How long it takes? Who gives? Mm -hmm. She's gonna execute it. Not gonna give up on. You know what I'm saying? Where her mind is, and that helps me. You yeah. know, because I didn't. I wasn't in the social media space, and I, I had to make adjustments too. Mm -hmm. I'm the dog. I'll go run around and pass out flies and do this and that. I met her. She went on that. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get a. You know, it opened my brain up to see more. Yeah. You know, I had to see more, and she helped me see more. Hmm, I like that. What about you? How, how does I having that. a... That was good. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. <laughs> about. Appreciate that, baby. But what about you? Because I know we talk about, like, guys, like, you know, finding the right woman. How does finding the right man, how does that help you in business? It's helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I know all my exes, none of my exes did, you know, what I do. None of them were, like, entrepreneurs and yep. did um, fitness. Yep. Um, they were all very... Like, why are you going to the gym all the time? Why are you doing this? Mm. Why are you doing that? You know, not really seeing the vision or, you know, my potential. And then when I met him, it was just a big eye opener. And once we started, like, working together and stuff, things just started moving so much faster and started, mm. things just started elevating so much quicker. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think that we just make a very, very great team. Um, I agree, yeah. We do. Um, because our visions and we're just we're just super aligned yeah and so you know what we want and our goals i like it you know we've all been told that your net work equals your net worth and in all my years in entrepreneurship i've never seen anybody really teach it. you know a lot of times people look at me and they look at my circle of friends they look at my circle of mentors they look at the people that i'm around they're like man how did you go about building that network well ladies and gentlemen it's a skill set that has to be developed. And I literally put something together to teach you how to be able to make the climb as an entrepreneur, as a leader, or someone that's just trying to grow in their influence. Somebody that wants to grow their, their community, their leadership, their income, their mindset, or their brand. Check the link in the description so you can get access to that course and start learning the skills necessary today. How do I attract the people, grab the influence, and grow my brand, scale my personality so I can get the results that I want? All of that's there. Click the link in the description for more details and get access to it today. All right, so let me talk to the the entrepreneurs that's like, because, all right, y'all had, had a business, right? You had to run it at some point, and then you had a newborn, right? You had a baby girl. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like? Because I know there's some people that's watching this, like, they found a rhythm. It's like, oh, snap, now we got a baby. Like, how did, what changed in the dynamics? How, could you all give some tips to people that's like, okay, maybe you got a newborn and roles maybe had to be adjusted or schedules had to be adjusted. What was that what was that like for you all? Um, I think that EJ and I we we had Makani once we were at a, a pretty established point. Mm -hmm. You know, um and 
I don't think that, for me personally, I'm not somebody that goes out all the time. I'm not somebody that, I'm very, I, I can stay in the house. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So for me, it was it hasn't been like a huge, huge, you know, transition. Mm-hmm. It, But, um, you know, it's just finding the balance. And it's not, a, finding balance, you're never going to find the balance. Mm-hmm. Nothing's ever just going to be completely, you <laughs> yeah. know, balanced out. It's right. not. But, I mean, all you can do is, you know, the best that you can. Communicate with each other. Because um, that's what we have to do, you know. if When EJ has to do something, I'm at home with Makani. If mm-hmm. I have to go do something, EJ's at home with Makani. She's not in daycare. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just communicating with each other and, um, you know, making it work. Um, my feed, I agree with all of that, too. Um, my feedback to that is get more organized Mm -hmm. um, and focus more on self-care. Because what happens, what did happen, I know from my my point is when we had Makani, I grew up so rough, kind Mm -hmm. of like without losing my mom and being just kind of bounced around a lot. Mm -hmm. I had already made my mind up like she's not going through this. Hmm. So it's her, 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 her. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It didn't matter. Like, I was just going to do everything that I, I could to make sure that she had everything that she needs mm-hmm. and wants, yeah. you know, because I'm in that position to do that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I think it, it was after she turned, like, one, mm-hmm. that's when I had to start, like, really, really, really getting on my self-care because I started kind of getting away from myself. Yeah. And so um, I started doing a lot of things. We ended up moving. Mm-hmm. We didn't, we're didn't. we not in the same place um, that we were in when we had Makani. We need more space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need more space. I need a, a place to where I can go and meditate. I have a man cave now. Oh, there we go. But um, I go down there, and I, and I look at stuff like podcasts, and, and, and I look at motivational things, and I, my, I, my brain is more open. But I do that very, 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 very early mm-hmm. before she even wakes up. Mm-hmm. And, okay. And by me doing that, I was able to say, okay, these are the days that I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I communicate that with her. Like she said, a big word, communicate. Mm-hmm. Communicate. This is, I'm doing this. I'm doing massage at 6 p.m. I'm training from this time, this time. And you can, you know, you fill in like that. Yeah. But I also gave her the respect that when she finally had Makani, um, that the schedule was open for you. Yeah. You the one that's been holding the baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So whatever you're trying to do, you plug in first and I'll just go off of that. I like that. And um, it just, it just, you have to want to do that. Yeah. If you want to elevate and you, it's, it's like mandatory. It's not like, it's not an option. Mm-hmm. Or complain about being all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, because kids just themselves change your whole life, mm-hmm. right? right? I think one don't change your life as much as like two or three. You know what I'm saying? I only got one because I've seen how people that got multiple, they like really be changed. All right. So for y'all that got multiples, we ain't got nothing for y'all today. <laughs> but just uh, communicate, you know what I'm saying? But, I think I think y'all said a couple of things I think is good though. It's like one, if if possible, wait till you can be established, you right. know, because that does make it a little bit easier. Um, you know, I've seen people that's like when when times are tough, it's like, and you got kids, it just make it even tougher. Right. Yeah. Right. But if you can be established, that's big. But I think the the big word is communicate, which is big in business as well. Right. Um relationships in business is something that I'm really big on, like maintaining relationships, honoring relationships. Have you all seen that relationships in you all's business has helped you all? And if so, what are some things that you all do to maintain relationships with people? Um, as far as us, they're not as important as they were mm-hmm. before the child yeah. and yeah, before exactly. the business started going. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a strong believer that people lose value over years. The same way we have to keep a business up and mm-hmm. build value every day and mm-hmm. deliver value. People have to keep that same energy with relationships. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be reaching out as much. Yeah. You know, we're not going to be hanging out mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's 1,000% normal and it's 1,000% fine. Yeah. And I think that's where we're at with it. The people that that are cheering us on and are rooting for us, like our inner family, that, that do call and say, how you doing, instead of, yo, let me borrow this or borrow that, let mm-hmm. me get that. Like, those are the people that you protect. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is... You're in and out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like miscellaneous at this point, mm-hmm. and it's and it's fine. But you have to be fine with that. You have to be fine with that. That's a tough place to go when you've grew up with people and you've built these decade worth of relationships <laughs> with people and you gotta finally not kick it as much, not talk mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. And you have to accept that so you can grow and, and, and pour that same energy into your family. Yeah. Yeah. And I and um 
EJ always gets on me because I always use the analogy like burning bridges. Mm -hmm. I, I always say, I, I just don't want to burn bridges with this person. <laughs> I don't want to burn bridges mm -hmm. with this person, you know? And I just feel like as a female, like we cherish our friendships and our sure. relationships, like not more than y'all, but just in a different way. Mm -hmm. And, um, but like you said, since I've had Makani, it changes things. And, you know, I'm not somebody anymore that you have to call every day and check yeah. on me. Like, and don't expect that from me either. Like, I have a daughter. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I have a daughter true. and um, we have lives and we're mm -hmm. grown now. You know what I yeah. mean? But I just try to, as much as I can, let the people that I do love and cherish that, you know, I love you. I, I hope you're doing great. Mm -hmm. You know, but you're not going to hear from me yeah. every day. Anymore. Yeah, And that's a good dynamic, too, because sometimes people feel like, maintaining relationships I mean we got to talk every day or every single week right. and there's yeah. some people like even you and I we like DM every now and then we talk right. share a book we run into each other I see you at pretty much every event all the time because you're always learning but like sometimes people feel like the maintaining the relationship means we got to talk every day to me it, I, I believe it just means just maintaining and being a good person right you know because like it, it's, it's an interesting dynamic right because I've seen it in business where it's like all right when you get into business you got to make a transition and it's not that I don't care about people that I hung out with or grew up with. It's just like we got to talk a little different because I got to go here first. Because really, in my life, it was like I had to get over here so I can come over here and help y'all. Right. But I can't try to help y'all and get over here at the same time. You it's too much You just have to work. delegate your energy. Yeah, yeah, no, You for know, sure. and like your priorities, mm -hmm. like this is what I have going on right now, and that's my priority. This yeah. is what I have the capacity to put my energy to right mm -hmm. now. I don't have the capacity to put my energy into something that really don't got nothing going on with what I got going on right yeah. now. You just don't like how much value that the the friendship or the family yeah. puts on that particular part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's how much energy are we going to really, are we going to stand beside what we're in a relationship for? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're family, if we're going to hang out on holidays, let it be that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's like our right. relationship is good. Mm -hmm. We vibe in every holiday. <laughs> we good. If our relationship is the club, it's the club, and but you're not going to be around business. Like, right, yeah, really. yeah, yeah. So it's just like if everybody stays, I feel like if everybody stays true to their position mm -hmm. in whatever relationship you're in with whoever, mm -hmm. that's when it's valuable. Yeah. yeah. But when soon as you get go left on our relationship, mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. like you're you're going down the priority list. Yeah. You have yeah. to. Yeah. And, you know, even when you become like, you know, an entrepreneur, like high level entrepreneur, there's another circle of relationships that you got to manage, right? Exactly. And, and I've even like, like, I've I always learned lessons from that too, because it's like, they're like, I've it's been people I kick it with. And then you, you find out later, they're like, oh, I never knew you. I uh -huh. never, you know, you're like, dang. And so it's like, you've got to learn how to like, like business, you have a certain set of relationships. And there's some of them that turn into being great friendships. Mm -hmm. But one of the mistakes I made is that I would take, like my best friend Isaac's relationship and then come into the world of business and think we about to be cool, like we cool with my best friend. That wasn't necessarily the case from day one. Right. Like sometimes stuff can grow, but it's about maintaining those relationships. And like you just said, like learning, like people got stuff going on. Right. And so like, if I'm inviting you someplace, I can't expect you to show up every time. You got kids, okay, so a different about, dynamic. What about like on the flip side of things where you may have built a friendship with mm -hmm. somebody that you did employee or something yeah. like that what about that yeah i've had that before you talking about like you gotta fire him gotta fire not even just fire him okay. just um it's hard for the boundaries to always be there when yeah. you've built a strong relationship with somebody that yeah let you do work with i had to sit down and have a conversation with him mm -hmm. and say listen uh you my boy but we still at work yeah, uh, exactly. And so, and, and I don't want to ever cross the line, and I hope that you will never cross the line if it's like a, a girl friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, we just got to make sure that we maintain a line because we still we still got a business to run. Right. And it's like, and I think like one thing I've been able to do well with my mentors and like like David is a, a great influence in my life, and that's like my guy. That's like my brother. Like I can call him, talk to him about anything. But when we business, we talking business. That's all we talking. Like, I'm not like, like even a lot of times I'll even call him Mr. Imanitia. And I'm like, <laughs> and I, a lot of times I'll call him Dave or DI. But like in business, when I'm texting with somebody, like, so I think for me it's like, I have to make sure I maintain the line um, with them and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, it's, it's almost like a kid. Like I, like I had to stop doing this with like, uh, like some of my nieces and nephews because I'd be playing around with them. And then we get into another place where like we ain't supposed to be playing. I'm like, all right, y'all got to stop now. But I'm like, bro, you was just playing with us over here 30 minutes ago, throwing right. us in the air and doing all this stuff. And so I had to start having some lines. I'm like, you know what? This is how we're going to operate in this space. Right. Y'all, we hanging out. We doing our thing outside. 
whatever. But when we hear, this is how we got to operate. So there, there's a there's a level of respect. And then I also learned that everybody can't come into your inner circle. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody because because not everybody can see you, can take seeing you in that light. And not that they can't. It's just a lot of them can't go back to respecting you the way they need to respect you. Mm-hmm. And so you just I have to make sure that. you choose the right people to bring there because you can never unexpose a person to somebody. Like I, when I first started in business, I used to, um, we would go do these events and everybody would stay in the same hotels together or Airbnbs. We went Airbnbs, but we'd get a house. And then they're like, I always had this philosophy. I know this is weird I'm about to say. Is I just felt like if somebody saw you in your underwear, they just respected you differently. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they'd be like, this is a human just like me. You know what I'm saying? Just, they just, they'd be like, this, this dude ain't nothing. So I was like, you know what? I learned, like, now to, to those people, I can never go back to the, because we came up together. But I was like, now, listen, I've rented buses for my team to go place, but I'm not, I'm not going on the bus. I'm going to be on the, I'm going to be on the flight. And not that I'm not in the trenches, but it's like, yo, we not, we not yeah, there. We not, we, right. yeah, I'm not exactly. sleeping in the room, the hotel. No, right. we're not doing that. Like you said, they just got to respect it. They got to. It's they got to. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Uh, who's the better dancer between the two, y'all? Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I hey. wouldn't even say he's the better dancer. I'm just a little bit more shy. Oh, okay. You know? right. yeah, that's going to naturally make me the better dancer. Because yeah, I won't get out there and dance. Yeah. yeah. You ain't shooting, I'm shooting. Like yeah. I said, I've never, I never been the type to go to parties and dance. And yeah. Stuff. Like, that's, I'm not a dancer. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. I can't. I like literally. I got like. I always tell people I got like four to five moves when it comes to dance, and I just have to space them out when I use them. I can't use them all at one party. You know what I'm saying. And I, I feel like you can. I feel people, like you can. And people, For real? Okay. Yes, <laughs> bro. They got like dance fever, so. <laughs> but see, people always be like, "Mecca, you can dance," because they be seeing me do the step board stuff. Yeah. I always say that. I'm not a dancer. I, I can like cheerleader dance. I was a cheerleader for a long okay, time, yeah, so I can go. do moves. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, a couple moves the Arsenal. I like. You it. know yeah. what I mean. I can do you moves. You can use them anywhere. I, I have rhythm. Mm-hmm. I can stay on beat. Yeah. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Business question I have for y'all because yeah. there's a dynamic too, right? And I, maybe this may help somebody that gets you know to a higher level in business. There's a point that your value increases, but you don't know it, right? And like. Was there a point that you didn't necessarily know how to price yourself? Like maybe, like there, maybe it was companies reaching out or people reaching out. It's like, yo, how much? That how much should still we charge? To that still day. happens to this day. Yeah. It still happens, still happens because we're still growing, day. and you and you still grow. Those numbers are going to change based off of your experience when you do it the first time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, you, but you have to do it the first time, and that's what people struggle with starting stuff. Mm-hmm. You struggle starting stuff, so you always postpone what that number could be. Yeah. Because you, know, you don't know what the first number is. Yeah. yeah. And so as we do stuff, we'll know, like, all right, well, this is, we did too much. No, yeah. yeah. It's, just a part <laughs> of, it's just a part of the journey. Though. It's just a yeah. part of the journey. Like yeah. like you said, you just got to do it one time and then realize, like, I could have made more money from this. Yeah. I, or I or it wasn't worth the time or the money. Exactly. Right. Or it wasn't worth it. wasn't worth either. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. But you just so, got to do it one time. So you, do you just, like, throw out a price? Like, because at this point, like, maybe people reach out to y'all, like, hey, so, come do it. Well, if it has something to do with, like, a task or something, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my journey of entrepreneurship and stuff, I've gone, I've done a lot of things, like, for free just because of the publicity or just because of, you know, whatever. That's just where I was at at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, what I try to do is think back on, okay, like, when I did this then, like, how much would I have wanted to be compensated for this or what you know what was my experience like for that and I just try to to um base it off of that yeah yeah I like it what about you like you do you just throw out a price hey y'all it's gonna be I don't never just throw out a price so I don't throw out a price I mean and it all depends on who you're doing business with too Mm -hmm. like yeah you don't try I I mean we're at the point now to where we don't charge for certain stuff I mean because it's all about value at this point so it's like but I know when I was training you know I started out with like 50 bucks a month Hmm. cool $50, $50, $50, $50, come on. Yeah. Then it got to $100. Yeah. Start getting more people. $150, $200, unlimited too. This is me training Sunday to Sunday. Wow. Um, then it got to $400, $500. I start helping people lose weight. Like mm-hmm. people, oh, this, she, I like helped her lose $125. She lost $50, she lost $60, she lost $70. Like I know what I'm doing now. I need yeah. to go up. Price is not the same as yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Vibes. And like I was yeah, about fact. to say too, um, I don't ever just throw out a price, but I definitely have more confidence in myself and know my value more than, you know, I did before. So, like you said, the price isn't what it was. Yeah, then, yeah. You yeah know? I, I think there's a confidence that comes from knowing of, like, you know, if I don't get this, it's not worth it for either of us. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, because 
I ain't gonna enjoy it, and you ain't gonna exactly. enjoy this process either. Right. Like, I've done it many times. I'm like, damn, why did I even agree to doing this? I'm flying over here. I'm doing this, and sometimes you lose the money on stuff, you know. And people don't really calculate that piece, unless it's like like what you said. Like sometimes it's an investment into like you sewing into something that could be beneficial on both ends. But I was wondering that because there's a part where you start growing. It's like, but you're growing, but to you, you feel the same. But the outside world views you differently. You, I think that that's a pro of having each other though. EJ yeah. always reminds me like, Becca, you are it. You know, like yeah, you yeah. are. And I have to. You know, he always reminds me of to, that. I have to, have to let her know that. I have to let her know that. You know, and no disrespect to anybody that you know she hangs with like a lot, but like she's in a space to where like she said she doesn't go out, so mm-hmm. she's obviously she's not used to flexing yeah. and not interested in flexing, not yeah. doing any of that type of stuff. She's mm-hmm. just interested in being in her own space, in her yeah. own lane. Mm-hmm. So you can get into that space. And so yeah. I have to just come out of the blue like, babe, you got this. Stop overthinking this. Yeah. Like, you got this. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it is. So Yeah. I like yeah, that. like EJ would be like, you don't gotta sit if they want you to do that, they need to be paying. You know, like he yeah. he I think that's a mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a benefit balance. of that's why each people other. Look better in your because most of the right. things that people want you, <laughs> exactly, exactly. a lot of the things that people want you to do, either you already done it and that you've passed that phase in your life, mm-hmm. and so if you were to do it again, it's like all right, this this is the line. Yeah, you know, you've kind of made the decision like that, and you know, we've been meeting a lot of people halfway too. Like it's not, I think it's more important on who you surround yourself with on a daily basis. I agree. It's going to help your decision making. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What would Justin do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you're hanging with Justin every day and Justin's making next level decisions, mm-hmm. chances are you're going to be making those same next level decisions because you're probably going to get his input yeah. on something that you're going through that he's probably went through five, six years ago. Right. And he's going to be able to give you not only how he overcame it then, on, but more so what not to do because you made this mistake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's powerful. Um, we, because we talk about it like having a circle all the time for that reason, and like it, like even like in our businesses and stuff like that, we're always pushing each other to like, okay, like yo, like me and Neil was just talking the other day, like bro, you got up your your speaking fee. I'm like, you mm-hmm. right, bro. I changed that joke immediately. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then this time yeah. I'm talking, I'm like, yo, bro, that's too cheap, man. You got you got to raise the price, and it's like I think it's whether it's a relationship or if it's friends, people that are surrounding you to keep pushing the envelope for it, p- keep pushing yourself for it because. If you get stagnant, that's, you you automatically no longer growing. And I, I always tell leaders this: is the day you stop growing and learning as a, as a leader, you you now you've now lost the ability to be able to lead people. Like right. the day you stop learning about your craft, you you don't even deserve to be able to keep posting about stuff and teaching people stuff because now you stop. You're hurting yeah. people. Yeah, you're, you're hurting, hurting people. people. Yeah, uh-huh. you get you get too comfortable. I, I I just want to touch on this like from a relationship standpoint, right? Was there and I don't know the answer to this. Was there ever a time? That you all were like, listen, uh, we not gonna be able to do the whole dating, like all going out all the time, eating all the time. We just got focus on our business. Or was there a time be like, listen, we always gonna make time for this? I just I don't know because everybody has different dynamics. So in the relationship. with me and EJ's dynamic is, you know, we met in the gym. Mm-hmm. So our relationship started and we got on business. We started yeah. working together. We started our business. So. That now we're at a point where it's like we need to start going out together more. We need to start <laughs> yeah. dating more and stuff like yeah. that. So ours is a little different. Like we didn't start out doing all that. Yeah. You no, know? I, I think it's good though because sometimes people be like, all right, I'm trying to balance. We got to do date night once a week, and I'm like, maybe you can. That's what we're at now. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Like, I'm five years older than Mecca, mm-hmm. and so like, I also look at it like from points of life. Like, okay, I know this amount of information right now already in mm-hmm. fitness. Yeah. You just graduated not too long ago. Well, you just, you know, you just switched what you're going to yeah. do not too long ago. Yeah. Let me kind of lead this real quick and 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 pinpoint certain things, yeah. and then we just grow off of that. But we got to hit the ground running yeah. because I don't have any money <laughs> to take you anywhere. No, it's true. That's well, I, true. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't have, I don't have it. Like, yeah. I mean, you know. So did you say that? You were like, listen. I, I mean, I made it clear. Like, okay. this is just what it is. Like, I'm at work all day. Yeah. Like, I'm in the gym all day showing you that I don't have time for this yeah and and you know now we have conversations like you know hey we need to go here yeah we need to you know we need to put this to the side you know we've probably went somewhere every month this year except february nice no we went somewhere in february that's when we got our passports was february we went to jamaica there we go went out the country for the first time this Mm -hmm. year like it's Mm -hmm. this is now yeah but we talking about four years ago Mm -hmm. yeah 
and I think this is very important to talk about because like you were saying, like people who tuned in to us 12 months ago, they just see the now yeah. part, but they don't know four years ago, we was sleeping on an air mattress with a pit bull. And it had a hole in it. And, and, a uh, hole. and waking up at night, you had to keep pumping it up. <laughs> and it up. I used to hate that job. Yeah, it's big. What's the silver tape? Us, both of duct us. Duct tape. Yeah. We duct taping that out the Wow. Yeah, For real, both of us waking up <laughs> wow. at yeah, both of us waking up at four o'clock in the morning to be at the gym all day, and you know we were actually in an apartment with a whole another couple, just a two bedroom apartment with a whole another couple, mm -hmm. with a pit bull in our room on yeah. an air mattress. Yeah, you know what I love about those like you, you don't see that story, you don't show that story, and I, I always share it with people like if you talk about what you're going through while you're going through, it's called complaining. Right. But if you talk about it after you become successful, it's called a story. Exactly. And, and so wow. many people. This is a good one. Yeah. So many people they get caught up sometimes like they're trying to they're trying to tell everybody what they're going through right now. And I'm like, listen, I ain't no disrespect, but everybody got a story. You got to hold on to it right now, till it becomes something motivational. I'm listening exactly. to stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. Exactly. If I go back, I I doubt if I went back to your content for four years ago, I would see any of that. And it's so crazy because that's how my first four years of entrepreneurship was. <laughs> I watched. Um, and, I, and I'm more confident to tell this story now. I witnessed my mom get murdered at eight. Wow, sorry to hear that. And so that was my excuse to all failures up into the fourth year of entrepreneurship. Whenever I didn't do anything right, doing it like it was me complaining. It's like, EJ, you could do this. But man, I, don't, I ain't have what you had, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm using that. You know, and, and it was hurting me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's why it was good that, like, I met Mecca, that I got in tune with, like, her family and stuff like that, and that yeah. helped. Mm -hmm. But I, now that we're having this conversation, it just opened my brain. That's what I was doing the first four years of entrepreneurship. And I was doing well. You know, I, was, I had a lot of clients. I had a good income. I didn't have any kids. I didn't have any girlfriend or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just me. Yeah. So that was a great income for myself, which was, like, 10000 a month. Yeah. Which is good money. Mm -hmm. But... Every time something was go wrong or go south, I would bring that up. Hmm. And this is the reason for my current failures. Yeah. This is why this happened. And I know a lot of people that's watching do yeah, that daily. That, yeah, you you do that. You you hold on to this. You hold on to this. This this is just eating you up. And now, instead of just using that as motivation, mm -hmm. you're grabbing it for a Band-Aid. Hmm. What, what was the... What was the, the shift? Like, what like what day did you recognize that, and what was the shift that you made? When me and Mecca met. Hmm. I mean, I wanted to date her. Mm -hmm. um, she was living with her parents mm -hmm. and everything, and I had to accept, finally accept, like, what she had and just take it from there. Yeah. Like, when you start accepting things, I feel like that's when you're growing the most. Yeah. When you just start, like, look, I'm I'm messing up over here, bro. Mm -hmm. I got to get right right here. This is the area right now. This is the top of the priority list. This is where I'm hurting at right now. And mm -hmm. it's excuses. Yeah. Excuses, excuses, excuses. You can do this. You just want to make an excuse. You know, you're worried about what could go wrong. Right. And so when I met Mecca, like I said, I got a whole new outlook on things. You know, what, what happens, EJ, when you date somebody that has their entire family? Right. And she has her entire family, mm -hmm. in a sense, you know, that I look up to. Mm -hmm. And so that changed, like, EJ, you don't create your own. Yeah. So now that Makani's here, it's like, okay, now this is the reward. Instead right. of the excuse, now this is the reward. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, this his story just hits a lot harder because of where we are now. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, a lot of people, like, tell their stories, tell their stories, their stories, but it's not going to be motivational to anybody when you're not, yeah. You know, yeah. doing well. When you're not yeah, like exactly. super successful yeah. to other people, yeah. it yeah. doesn't really mean too much. So I stopped talking about it. Yeah. Stop talking about it. EJ, you can't talk about this no more. Nobody's going to care until you start really, really, until they see you elevating. Wow. People, most people got to see you elevate to listen. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Some of these same stories are being told right now, mm -hmm. but like nobody's listening. Yeah. Nobody's listening because of where they're at in their current mm -hmm. life. Yeah. It's like you got to find a way to get through it. It's like the, the person that, you know, their, their parents were alcoholics and one person chooses to become an alcoholic because that's what I always did. And somebody says, I'm not going to drink no more because everybody in my family was an alcoholic. Right. Right. It's, it's like it's taking the same situation but deciding to do something different with it. And I think what's interesting is that, like, what you did, you actually have done both. At one point in your life, up to a certain point, it was like, I, I use it as an excuse. Mm -hmm. And then up until another point in your life, till now, you're like, you know, I use it as a reason why I've got to do it. Right. So, even to an extent, if you, like you even said at the beginning, you know, Makani, 
it's like your one, two, three. You know, it's like that's that's what you all really focus on. You know, outside of um, you know you, you all's relationships. I think I think that's huge, bro. That's uh, that's big. I didn't even know that. Yeah, the biggest word is just acceptance, y'all. It's accepting what you're struggling with, and mm -hmm. you know, and that takes a lot of humbleness. That takes a lot of you know discipline. That takes a lot of the things that we talk about all the time that don't cost money. Mm -hmm. um, that you have to work on to get to that phase and. That's when you elevate, when you yeah. accept where you're weak, and that's that was probably my weakest area in my life. Cause that's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, this is it. Mm -hmm. This takes this. I'm listening to your story, but like you know, I was that person, bro, and I'm not that person no more. You know, I'm listening to your story, and I would always make my situation bigger, mm -hmm. cause I witnessed it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I witnessed somebody commit suicide, and I witnessed somebody murder my mom and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like. That was, I feel like your story is not, nothing compared to that, and that just was not fair. That just is not right. Yeah. Cause somebody, it I may not be to that extent. Because the biggest thing to this person, that's the biggest thing that's happened to you them. You know what I'm saying? You know? Like it's just not fair. You can't, yeah. you know, you can't compare your tragedy to somebody else's, what yeah. their tragedy is. Yeah, no, cause, cause it, everybody's tragedy is equal to that's them. That's their tragedy, right. you know? exactly. So, that's big. How, how is um, personal development is big you know, I teach it a lot of times. We do we do a lot of events. How has that uh, played a part in you all's business or your growth? Like, do you all focus on it? And if so, what does that look like in your in your business? Uh, personal development is 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 like an up and coming thing with like the both of us together. Mm -hmm. I know um, with me saying what I just said about yeah. my mom and everything, I know that I had to start doing things to cater to EJ because I know if EJ's not right, a lot of stuff is not right. Mm -hmm. But I know if EJ is on everything is on. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so the only way to protect that is now when I wake up, the first few things that I do is not for Makani, it's not for Mecca, it's not for my grandma, it's not for none of those, it's for EJ. Mm. I have to get up and I have to, I smoke. Mm -hmm. I smoke every morning, I smoke throughout the day, but I get up and that's for me, I shower. You know what I'm saying? I get up and do things for EJ. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that way, I know now, now I can serve. Yeah. Now I can, because by nine o'clock, Zoom call. Yeah. In the gym, come back, another Zoom call at two. You know, you working now, but if, and, and I feel like a lot of people neglect that every day. You don't even look at it like, mm -hmm. I've done 10 things for myself before I did one thing for Makani or Mecca. Yeah. Now I feel like that's so important. And I have better days and I have very productive days because of that. Mm -hmm. Now what we're working on now as a, as a, a unit is how we can do personal development with each other. Mm -hmm. And right now it's just us traveling. That is us staying off of Instagram for a duration of time. That is us just disconnecting and watching movies. We're on Netflix. We're just trying to find a way to date mm -hmm. with our schedule. We're trying to find a way to comfort each other as far as the relationship um, standpoint. But I, I know for a fact that me doing personal development by myself, because I'm the man in the house. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're born to be tough. We're born to be strong. We're born to be able to take anything and handle everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool. Mm -hmm. We accept it. That's just, that's that's what it is. That's how we rock it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But as far as together, we've just been like, like I said, trying to watch movies. She watches shows. She watches movies. And I'm, I'm forcing myself to get into that. That's like personal development as well, because if work is all we talk about, mm -hmm. my head is ringing. Yeah. And you know, we've gotten a lot better with that over the years since we did start out ground running. We didn't date, yeah. we didn't wine and dine. We still haven't wine and dined to this day, but we have traveled. Yeah. And we have been traveling and seeing the world and things like that. But it definitely helped. Again, that's another acceptance. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, we got enough money, mm -hmm. we got enough relationships, yep. we have enough friendships, we have a good amount of employees, we have help. Yeah. We can we can start watching movies now. We can start kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not not getting lazy, yeah. but just understanding that we got a relationship and a family to 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 grow. And you know the business can come second sometimes. Yeah. You know, and that's that's normal. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, then you will have a very 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 unsuccessful unorganized business yeah. and yeah. a relationship. Yeah. That's I think that our daughter Makani has helped me a lot with my personal development. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just a lot more mature yeah. and a lot more um patient, mm -hmm. a lot more loving. I feel like now with her, I have really really improved on the things that are important as far as what I'm going to allow my energy to go towards mm -hmm. you know what I mean like 
before like people comment in you know stuff yeah. under the, like I would give them my energy you know <laughs> but now it's just like yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> who are you you know exactly I feel like and I feel like that's a part of you know personal development yeah, it is. Yeah. just really being able to like I said delegate your energy and I just feel like that's where everybody is that's where everybody's at everybody's mm-hmm. needing everybody's working on themselves yeah. everybody's wanting to get better and mm-hmm. figure out life yeah right. no I love it I love it yeah <laughs> I know, I know. I have, I'm gonna find the event. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. But Tony Robbins has an event that's for couples. I'll find out what it is because I think a lot of people they have like really, really good experiences. But I have a lot of couples in my business, and it's just like sometimes it's just like them doing those type of things together, just occasionally. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like in the Tony Robbins joint, sometimes the couple joint might be in Hawaii, so you go to Hawaii for a couple of days, and then you spend oh, yeah. spend a week, and it's just like you just continue to grow together that foundation because you know family is really the foundation of a lot of things that you can build on top, especially if, on top of, especially if you got the success and the results that, that you all are having. So shout out to y'all, man. Cause y'all, y'all, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're navigating multiple worlds at one time, entrepreneurship, your relationship, parenthood, right. you know, it's a lot of things. So I just want to say shout out to y'all because you know, y'all, y'all, y'all are doing it well. You make it look easy. I know it's not. <laughs> um, anything y'all would say to the person that is sleeping on the air mattress right now, that's in their part, that they're in the place they don't want to be living like, but and they don't have the resources they want today, but they want to get their business to a place uh, of success, whatever that is for them. Anything y'all would say to yourself on an air mattress, yourself on air mattress, you know, four years ago, six years ago, what would you say? I would just say, um, obviously, stay consistent, mm-hmm. um, stay true to yourself, but also, God's timing is always right on time you know you're exactly where you're supposed to be in that time i, I truly believe that so god want me on the air mattress <laughs> i mean you gotta you can't no but you can't skip steps yeah you no cannot, you're right you're you know you can't skip yeah. steps and we had to go through that yeah you know what i yeah. mean right. and like if we hadn't gone through that and we just off rip was where we are now like we would have gotten very stagnant yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm. like you have to you can't skip steps and you gotta just that's where, you, that's where you're supposed to be right now. Yeah, yeah. God wants you on that. Yeah, it's a lesson. Right now. It's a lesson you got to pick up there. When you pick that lesson up, you'll be ready for the next. Yeah, level. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Love it. Um, my take on that is mastering one thing. Um, the biggest thing that somebody would be doing on the air message is trying to be all over the place. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get by any means. Just mm-hmm. hustle. By just hustling and you hustling, you doing this and doing that. And by all means, get your money. Mm-hmm. We've all been there. I've worked temp agencies. I've been hired and fired within two weeks, I feel like a lot of us have. Mm-hmm. But and but, but if you mo- think about it, when you're doing all that, you are all over the place. You're all over the place. Mm-hmm. But when you master one thing and, and ultimately block out the noise. Stay down. And stay yeah. down. You stay down. Yeah. And, and stay down, if y'all didn't know, stay down means patience. We've mm-hmm. been saying patience a lot in here, and yeah. that's kind of how the brand came about. I had to find something that was going to make me be patient. What if I throw a logo out there? Let me pay for a logo. <laughs> Yeah, and now I have to do this. Yeah. Like now, you have to run the play. You mm-hmm. cannot yeah. never call a timeout. Yeah, can, that's real. You can call a timeout <laughs> in certain areas, but you got to run this play. Yeah, you got yeah. to execute. But anyways, um, just stay con- stay consistent with one thing. Because mm-hmm. when you master one thing, you'll be able to master everything. Yeah. These same ideas that 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 person that's on the blow up mattress, that person that's not living how they want to be living right now. Those same ideas, put them in the vault. Mm-hmm. They'll the, still be there. The consistency, like that's a, a personal trait. That's a person's trait. That's a characteristic. Right. You know, so like he said, once you learn the trait of being consistent, you're gonna be able to apply that to yeah. everything. I love it. And a lot of and a lot of the things to piggyback on that is a lot of the things that that same person that's in that situation is going through. Is not under, you may think that to get out of your situation is gonna take money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take everything that doesn't cost money, yeah. like discipline. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Consistency, the, yeah, these work big. patience. It doesn't cost money. The things that we got to work on in everyday life don't cost a dime. Right, it costs your time. That's a bar. It's a time, maybe. Because a person in that situation <laughs> where they're looking at what I don't have is money. Mm-hmm. Right. But this is where you develop the discipline. This exactly. Is where you develop the patience. This is where you develop the self control and. All the other things that you need to be able to win. That's that's huge. Cause, and at the end of the day, there's no end game. You know, like mm-hmm. it's always up. It's, it's always, always more. It's mm-hmm. always more. It's always yeah. more. You know, we not yeah. where we want to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you're never gonna be exactly where you want to be because you're always gonna want to elevate. Yeah. Because so. when you're not making ten thousand a month, you like you think ten thousand a month, you rich, and then you get right. to ten thousand a month, you be like, okay, 
You know what I mean? Right. And then you start making hundred thousand dollars a month. It's, it's like yeah, it's like okay. more, more, yeah, more. Yeah, more. You know? There's another level to get to here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Those same elevate. characteristics are gonna apply. The discipline, the consistency, the patience, like wherever you're at, all of those are gonna apply. I love it. I love it. I always, you know, anytime somebody come on the show, man, I always like to, you know, bless them with something, man. Let's see if we, what you got for us? You know, it ain't that big. It ain't that big. Don't get, okay, it ain't okay. crazy, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like gifts, man. I know. You know. I love gifts. Okay. Yeah, Run the Let place, Let me find out. Fat boy. Oh, wow. Now I'm that's person. dope. Okay. You got to show the people. Damn, we got to use this on Thursday. <laughs> Where you get these? It's heavy duty, too. Awesome. Is heavy right. duty. We this do one is for you. Down. You can uh, you can open this one off the air, okay. cause you know what I'm saying. I know some you like to partake in. This is, you know oh, okay. I, I right. show appreciate it. <laughs> and then yeah, uh, I didn't know what size Makani were, but you know we got some gear Yay. for baby girl. And then um, there's a book I really like. It's called Good to Great. I don't know if yes. you guys read it before. I'm gonna mm -hmm. read this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is for you Let's guys. Personal growth, personal development, you know what I'm saying? So this is, yeah. Yeah. Thank so this you is so much. Guys. I appreciate that, brother. I, I appreciate y'all. Uh, yeah. Did yeah, you show them to run the flag? Did you? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, show them. Where the camera at? Uh-oh. We really there need to. That's a little step-up step joint. Boom. Yeah, run the yeah. play. Run the play. Y'all see it, right? Y'all do a couple moves. I'm going to do a couple. We're going to do a couple moves on that. I'm going to do some moves on right now for him. You know what I'm saying? I don't need my assistant. Shout out to RG. No, that's dope. That's dope, bro. And uh, yeah, no, we uh, we appreciate y'all, you know, because you know you don't have to take the time out to you know pour into people and so on to people. And I think you should, uh, you know, anytime you get something, you should always be able to pay it forward to people. Y'all have done that, because uh, you never know, man. Like one conversation, like I learned some stuff today about both of y'all. I'm like, man, this is really this could be a game changer for a lot of people because I picked up a lot of lessons from this conversation today. So I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all for coming through. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm sure no you guys enjoyed it as well. We had a, blast. a lot of a lot of great information. And uh, let everybody know where to find y'all. Um, anything you get offered, I know you got y your own brand of the step up boards and the bands. You know, I, I ain't working on my booty no more, but that's all. <laughs> yeah, but uh, y'all tell her where to find you. I'm mm. um, stay down EJ on Instagram at S T A Y D O W N. Stay down EJ. Um, SDDFit.com, man. You got everything that you need. Period. That's all you need. So yes, yeah, Mecca underscore M E C C C A three C's on Instagram. Again, um, sddfit.com. You get all of our classes live. You get to go back and watch them on demand at any time. Um, sddfit.com. Um, we also have our oh my dot glutes Instagram. We have the get down stay down underscore Instagram, and we have the sddfit.app Instagram. So They're not playing. You can go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they not play at all. So, listen. <laughs> but listen, that like what I learned today is like listen, you focus on one area and then what I like that you all have already started to do is diversifying in your arena first, right? Like a lot of people they just start doing a lot of stuff. It's like, yo, we're already doing this, let's get the boards. We're already working out, let's get the bands. And some people they trying to do so many things at one time, it's like, yo, eventually you can diversify to that stuff, but Diversifying your own industry first, right? Yes, That's exactly. Sure. Master huge. one, sure. one thing. Yeah, so I appreciate y'all again. Audience, listen, man. We love y'all, man. You know, uh, the Run the Play show, we here to get y'all some of the top plays. Y'all just heard some from EJ and Mecca. Now all y'all got to do is go run it. Much love, y'all. Peace. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run the Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's Run the Play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted.